seven-session study in September about the Trinity. The study will focus on understanding the Trinity to build deeper intimacy with God. This study targets those who want to explore the foundational doctrine of our faith and enhance their relationship with God. There is a sign-up sheet on the table in the back of the fellowship hall. Please sign your name and state a preference of a morning or afternoon class if you are interested in attending this study. This is just a reminder that the deadline for submission of information to be entered into the bulletin or slides is noon on Wednesdays. This policy allows Gwen to get the bulletins and slides made on time for our services. Please pray for President Biden as he is experiencing illness, former President Trump and his family as they recover from the attempt on his life, and the family and friends of Corey Capitori as they learn to live with the memory of their friend and father. Thank you. Okay. Now let's uh, pass the peace and welcome people and make sure you speak to a, a stranger. You all got strangers to me. <laughs> if you're a stranger, you're no longer a stranger. Don't you think you're right? <laughs>
us with Jonah 3, 4 through 9. Jonah began by going on a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believe God. The fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in dust. This is the proclaimed proclaim he issued in the video. By the decrease of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet repent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, we now come to the time in our service where we share first our joys, then our concerns, or then the joys to be shared today. Billy's cats are free again. All right, amen. That's really good. That's really good to be shared. Yeah, sure. Any other joy to be shared? All right, amen. That's really Any other joy to be shared? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Janice and I went to Virginia for a celebration of life for her sister, and there was over a hundred people that showed up, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really a blessing. And uh, first one I had ever been to, and, and you know I do recommend that. It, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure how I feel about it, but mm -hmm. it really uh, showed how many people cared and, right. and what her life had touched so many people. Yes. That's the one way the Lord ministers to us is the death of his saints that, that, that speaks to his volumes about what it means to a personal life and the impact of the on people, that's for sure. Thanks for sharing that. Is there any other joy to be shared this morning? I visited my sister the other Friday and because she's making a trip and um, she has some figs on her fig tree and those figs are really good. You know, they're ridiculous. You have to get them quick though because the birds, the deer, and you know, to get them. <laughs> They are really good. Well, change the page from blueberries. Okay. Um, any other joy to be shared? Okay. Any concerns to be lifted before the church? Prayer requests? Yes, yeah, Sam's sick right now. Uh, she just had a sore throat and she, uh, she's feeling a little better. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other, any other concerns to be shared? Tom Reichert's having surgery tomorrow. Tomorrow, right now. I gotta give him a call, see what time it's gonna be. Thanks for reminding me of that. Okay, Martin? I'm sick for you for tomorrow. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go see my dad. No, okay, where's she going to? Uh, Ohio. Oh, yeah, Ohio, okay, all right. Somebody else comes from Ohio, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Any others? Um, I think we all know that you know, there's a lot of this unsettledness and, 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 and angst in our country right now with all this going on, what happens to President Trump and different things. It's just, it's really, it's really, it's really sad what's going on. And, uh, and I, you know, not to be gloomy, but I heard the other day that Iran is about a week or two from getting a, a being able to make a nuclear bomb. So it's just, you know, but you don't have heard a lot about that, but so that's being squelched. But, the simple fact is, is that uh, we need to be very much in prayer about what's going on in this world. Okay, but God's in control, we know that. Uh, right in our times, is in His hands. For sure, His will, His will will be done. Okay, are there any unspoken requests? Yeah. Our burdens on our yeah. Okay, we're going to have a call for prayer. Thank you. 
Lord, we are so thankful that you loved us enough to send your son into this world and live the life that you live to save us from our sins. God, we are so thankful. And dear God, this morning we believe in all of our hearts that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the Savior of the world. And Lord, we believe this morning that all things are in your hands, dear God. We thank you for Jesus and for the Holy Spirit and all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, this morning, we know that this world is a troubled place. There's a lot of wickedness going on. There's things going on right and left on all sides. But Lord, we know that you are in control. We know, Lord, that you have an eye on the sparrow. You have your eye on us. And we know, Lord, that you are working towards bringing your kingdom into its fullness in this world. One day you will come again. Lord, we trust that with all of our heart. We know, Lord, that meantime, the most important thing that we can do is be steadfast in our faith and let our light shine. So that other people will be one into the kingdom of God. Dear God, the goal and the main motive and the reason why we're here today is to worship in ways that will help other people understand the wonderful mercy and grace of God and to win other people into the kingdom. For them to be saved and to know you personally as a Savior, God. And that's what it's all about, dear God. And dear God, give us the strength to be steadfast in this endeavor. Also, Lord, we pray for the many situations that are in our church and our community as far as folks as health. We're thankful for the progress that has been made, dear God, for this cancer-free report. It's wonderful. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we pray that other people will receive good news, too. And dear God, we thank you for the technology that we have to stay in time to help our loved ones, dear God. Dear God, there's a lot of situations going on. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be there, be there for the folks, dear God, and lead them on and give them strength and encouragement. Heal us, we pray, dear God, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to walk together hand in hand and shoulder in shoulder in this world as we journey on towards your kingdom, dear God. And dear God, this morning, we thank you for the young people that we have on our church, Lord. We are thankful, Lord, dear God, for the program that they're going to put before us this morning to show us what they learned in the vacation Bible school with Dad and Joe's the other day. And Lord, we just pray your blessings upon them. And dear God, this morning, when we worship with our tithes and offering, Lord, help us to realize that our our offerings and giving to our acts of worship to you. We promise, Lord, we will be good stewards and use these gifts to spread the gospel of Jesus through this community and the world. And now, Lord, we pray your guidance and your Holy Spirit in this service today. Strengthen us all as we participate and show our love to you and worship you. But, Lord, it's all about showing our love to you and glorifying you. Be with us, Lord, feel your presence in a special way. And now, Lord, we all pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. So, Lord, you pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So now we'll worship the Lord through our tithes and our offerings as the ushers will come forward.
we give these gifts to you in love. Lord, we love you and adore you. Thank you so much for what you've done for us. Lord, we know we can never outgive you, but we promise we will be good stewards of these gifts. Dear God, we promise and pray in the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> I think now we're going to have a special program. I'm looking forward to that. Good morning, everybody. Um, as you guys know, we went down. I don't think I need a mic because I'm very loud, <laughs> so I think you can hear me. But um, at the end of the day, we went down to um, Daddy Joe's, which we've been doing for the last three or four years now, and we do a little Bible lesson down there with the kids, and they also actually have time to play and do activities, and you will see the pictures that we took and the many activities that we did. And um, we did Jonah and the well, and they did the first three, um, three chapters, well not chapters, but three lessons that we did. There are many lessons, but we chose the first three. It was teaching them also about obedience, and we hope that they learned something. So now I'm gonna ask them a few questions <laughs> and see were they really listening or if they were just saying, okay, if Miss Pam will hurry up and be quiet so we can get to the pool or we can go to an activity. <laughs> so I will turn around and ask the kids or sideways and ask the kids some of the questions so they can answer for you guys. <coughs> Listen, everybody, what was our lesson about? Obedience. Right, what did we learn? Does anybody know what we learned? That Jonah was swallowed by a well because he did not obey God. And where did what did God ask Jonah to do? To go what to Nineveh. 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 It's hard for me to. Nineveh. Nineveh. Um, to, to tell the people that <coughs> to change their ways. Okay. But instead, he went to uh, Tarish. Karshish. Okay, and why? Why did he not go? Because he felt that the Nineveh people were bad and didn't deserve God's love. But God still loved them even though they were bad, right? Yes. And he still loves us, right? Yes. But we just need to learn to do what? Obey. 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 Okay. <laughs> What was our memory message? Does anybody remember? Good job, good job. Now, what did uh, God send because Jonah did not listen? A, storm. A, a, big big storm. Storm. a big storm, and then he got thrown off the boat, and a whale swallowed him. And where was he? Um, where was he sitting at? Oh, he, he was <laughs> He was sleeping on the bottom of the boat. He was sleeping, he wasn't sitting. Yeah. And we skipped one part, which was my fault because I had to drag somebody across the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did he run from God yes. or did he not? He, he ran. ran. Did he really run? Well, no, he tried to hide from God. And can we hide from God? No. Right. And God what should we do? Every angle. Right. So he went and hid on the ship, sleeping. But see what he calls he God still found him, right? Yes. God caused the big storm and then a whale swallowed him. And then after three days, he got spit out and then he went and told the people. Right. So we should, the key word, as I said, is okay. obey. And we should obey, whether it's our parents. Adults in the church, pastor, loose and ever, and God, most important God. We already know that that's the most important person we're supposed to listen to. But we are supposed to obey. And if we don't obey, what happens? There's what? Consequences. Right. Was there a consequence or not? Yes. For John? Yes. He did. Right. He got well. So what do we need to do? We need to obey God and the and people obey. around us. And the people. Right. And do you think you just saw me drag Amari across the room? Do you think I could hide that? 
No. You know, right? Exactly. You know why Miss Pam doesn't hide what she does? Because there's no lady. Right, because I can't hide it. So guess what? I know I'm tough, and it's my teacher coming out of me. When I discipline, I discipline tough. I'm not going to wait and take you in the hallway. And I'm not going to do I'm just going to do what I got to do right here. I mean, everybody can see because God sees it. So there's no use to me hiding, y'all. Okay, guys. Yeah, do the show. Just go ahead and I'll go. And we did do... Um, a slideshow and you will see in the slideshow where they were having fun we were doing our lessons and of course you'll see me there doing our lesson and we went out for ice cream thanks to mr spencer he sponsored the ice cream and the wood for us to do our um actual do our s'mores marshmallow roasting and also we had enough to do peanuts y'all so we even snitched and got some peanuts <laughs> so the kids loved it there they are with their ice cream and these little cool shades we're relaxing. They're waiting because they had not listened, so therefore they had to wait to go to the water. <laughs> so they decided we would separate. So you see everybody separated. And uh, that is, <laughs> yes, we did. And we stayed in the little green yurt back there. And there's the other one where Albert's sitting with the glasses on. Some of my people are not here this morning because there are other places. But anyway, there were a few more people that came. This is our big event, guys. This was our fishing. Um, then, thanks to Pastor Brooks, he came down, got the rods, or someone donated it. Oh and thank God for Mr. Eric and Pastor Bruce, because we couldn't have did the fishing thing on our own. For me, I'm not a swimmer. <laughs> My nerves ain't any good when it comes to that. Ask Eric. I was way back to the year at one time. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, one looks like they were going in. Eric said, it's okay. He didn't go in. <laughs> so as you see, even the little ones had a pole, not doing anything, but they had a pole. They thought they were doing something. Oh, that's good. What kind of fish? What kind of fish did I catch? I don't fish did she catch? There were shell poppers, shell poppers. There was a whale out there, but for some reason or other, it was We didn't get the <laughs> whale. <laughs> I actually caught a fish. I, yeah, it was I, was caught, I caught a fish. And that's our group right there in front of Yogi. And of course, you'll see some bad pictures. Uh, they wake up very early with those smiles on their face, ready to go, no matter how tired we were. <laughs> they were ready. <laughs> and we did have two of the little ones, and this is one of them. And that is everybody that attended around the Yogi Bear. And <laughs> yes, and this is the song that we learned that we practice, and of course they knew the song. But when they get in front of people, I don't know, y'all. We didn't have music because we did not do the music, so I had to leave that up to Mr. Dale <laughs> and Miss Lois and Miss Lois because she's playing. We did it without music. No, 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 I see. Are you ready? She was like, we don't like this.
When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John on the boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee on the boat with the hired men and followed them. The word of God for the people of God. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Real Fix for furnishing us with the Grim Buster. They furnished us with 12 of them and didn't charge them or anything like that. And, um, and I tell you, Grim Busters are kind of, you're not familiar with them, they're kind of hard glass cane holes and things like that. And they're a lot of fun. We have some short ones and some long ones. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, there's some well fed fish out there, but a lot of them here just got away. <laughs> and next year, we're trying to have a couple more guys out there to keep in track of all them. Kids with brim busters and hooks and whipping around and baby things like that. You can be kind of nervous, you know what I mean? Of course, you don't want to drown or get bit by a snake or anything like that. Okay? So, anyway, um, so but what I want to do, and actually, this is not going to be a very long sermon, okay? So, but I just wanted to kind of, kind of repackage some of the things here in the story of Jonah to, to bring our attention to that. Um, I always like to make a connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, Jesus was in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God. And he was he was the he was the, the incarnation of God in the flesh, and he lived and breathed the Scriptures. And this is a really good example here of Jesus and, and, and what he was all about. Because the story of Jonah, uh, and it's important to note that Jesus called out by name three different prophets when in, in the Gospels. Uh, one was Jonah, the other was Daniel, and the other was Isaiah. And he actually used a lot of the Scriptures from Jeremiah, Hosea. Uh, Malachi and Zechariah, as he as he took and he presented his message to people, and he taught and preached um, throughout his ministry. And so the thing about it is, and it's important to understand that, that as a lot of us sometimes we tend to see the stories in the Bible as a fairy tale. This wasn't a fairy tale. Okay? Jesus affirmed that Noah, I mean that, that Jonah was swallowed by a fish, okay, a whale or whatever. Okay, this is not a a fairy tale. He was swallowed by a whale. Okay, Jesus took it literally, and we should also too. And there's a message here. In a way, it was a fulfillment of the prophecy of his death and his resurrection. As Jesus faced his impending crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. There's a parallel there between Jonah uh, and being swallowed as a whale. And, and spending some time in there. Jesus spent time in the earth. And then Jonah being spit out and then doing the will of God. And Jesus, of course, doing the will of God. But there's also some distinctions that need, need to be drawn, some things we need to understand about, about Jonah and Jesus. Okay? Some very, very big differences. They glorify God and, and, and some things to us as far as the warnings about the way we go about doing things. Now, here it says in Matthew 12, <clears throat> 38 through uh, 41. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For if Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of men will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented of the preaching of Jonah, and indeed are greater than Jonah is here. Okay. So it's important to understand that there's some commonalities between Jesus and Jonah, but there's also some very big differences. First off, Jonah was reluctant. You can see by what the children shared with us, and we all know the story of Jonah. He did not want to obey God and do what God had called him to do. He was reluctant, and he was his, his heart wasn't in it, okay? And we need to ask ourselves some questions as far as what our heart is into and what it's not into and our reluctance and things. Um, he was also resistant to the point where he actually tried to go in another direction. But God works in very mysterious ways. And he wanted Jonah to go to the people of Nineveh. And so he uh, allowed him to be swallowed up in the belly of a fish. And then that fish, Jonah had a pity party. He pouted, but he also prayed. Okay. And he prayed. And so he reluctantly obeyed God. And just imagine when that fish spit him out, 
he probably felt pretty good about that and relieved. But he also had to march for three days or three nights. It was a long ways to Nineveh. He probably ran and didn't want to get there. And so you can just imagine when he hit town, he wasn't smelling too good. Okay? And, uh, and I always say, look, you know, uh, God, God can make uh, the most crazy, insane situations and circumstances. He can work his good will. And so Jonah preached probably the simplest, shortest sermon ever, okay? And those people listened, and they repented, and God relented. He didn't destroy them. Now, later on, he did, because of them, they fell back again. <clears throat> but the important is, is that Jonah obeyed God, and he uh, did so with great reluctance, and God had to really uh, work with him, and, and in some ways, kind of force him to do what he's supposed to do. But God will have his way one way or the other. But he's going to also allow us to have a free will. And then, of course, a really sad thing about Jonah is at the very end there in the book of Jonah, he was felt sorry for himself. He was angry that God had forgiven those people. And he asked, he was still so bad about it, he asked God to take his life. Now, we really don't know how Jonah ended up, okay? We don't know. And, of course, the one thing we need to, a lot of questions arise here. You know, the people, they, they, they repented and God relented, but were they really saved, okay? I have no doubt that some of them were saved, okay? But most of them were not. They fell back into, and then, of course, we know Jesus said, God is the way. People have a way of falling away, okay? But that's that story there. But Jesus used that story to answer the stubborn, unbelieving uh, Pharisees, and scribes that, that they basically and fundamentally have sort of show them their heart is a heart. And then on the other hand, with Jesus, he was eager to do God's will. Okay? He said in John 4 34, that it is my it is my meat to do the will of my father. Now that's the King James Version. In other words, it is his food, his spiritual food, his desire is to do the will of God. Mark 10 45, the Son of Man came to seek to save and those who were lost and give his life as a ransom for many. As Jesus was eager, he was also submissive. Okay, we know the story of the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus agonized in prayer. He saw what was before him. He said, he sweat drops of blood. He said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he went to the cross. He went to the cross. And we're told here, in Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our, our, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus was willing to go all the way to the cross. And although it was very difficult, we can only imagine, and we can't really imagine, the suffering that he went through. In the end, what he did accomplished a pathway for us to be saved as we look to Jesus and all that he did for us. And that's important to understand and see that here. It's important to understand that God's love is deep and wide. I don't know about any of y'all, but when I was raised in the church of Nazarene, and when I was their age, the children's age, we used to sing a song, Deep and Wide, Deep and Wide, There's a Fountain Floor and Deep and Wide. Has anybody here ever heard that song? We used to belt it out, man. We'd be singing, jumping up and down. Deep and wide, wide and deep. Uh, and and, and so that God's love encompasses the whole human race, everybody. Jesus said, anyone who comes into me, I will in no wise cast out. Anyone, okay, even the wicked Ninevites, anybody, any Pharisee that would repent. And Paul was a repentant Pharisee, okay, but he, he did some pretty cool things to Christians before he got saved, okay? There's hope for anybody and everybody. And the message for us today, especially in the time that we're living in, is we see a lot of anger towards each other. It's been manifested over this past week, week and a half, and we see how, how people, I've heard a lot of talk on the news about how people are just speaking out against people in, in ways and counseling them in ways that dehumanize them and make it easy for somebody who's not playing with a full deck to go out and do something, okay? And we're, we're just living in a time that's kind of insane. 
But God calls us back to sanity. He calls us back to understanding Him and His love and understand that He loves everybody. Everybody. And that is the core and the heart of the gospel is that we must believe. We have to believe in Jesus. Believe in His goodness and His holiness. That He was God's perfect Son. He was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world for us. And to believe in Him is to experience and understand salvation. And that's important. It's important that we be saved. Going to church does not make you a Christian. Being saved makes you a Christian. But somebody say one time that going into McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. Okay? You've got to be a Christian. You have to be saved. You have to really buy into what's going on. You have to understand that you're a sinner. And we all are sinners. You know, I've known people in my life who, frankly, might be a little bit prejudiced, but some people very close to me, I, I think were near about as perfect as you can be, but even they would tell you that there was a time when they had to accept the Lord as Savior, okay? And my mom was one of those people. She had to, I mean, she was a wonderful person raised in a very dysfunctional family, but somebody asked her to a Baptist church when she was 12 years old. She began to read the Bible, and she went forward in 1949 Billy Graham's crusade and accepted the Lord. But I believe she was saved before then. She just made a public profession of faith. But the thing about it is, is that we all need to make a stand and make a profession and come to that realization that Jesus saves us from our sin. So we must believe, we must repent, and be truly sorry for what we've done. And true repentance means that you surrender yourself in submission to God and let Him clean you up. None of us come to God with a resume. A lot of people like to want to get their act together before they you know, get right with God. Ain't no way you can't get your act together. I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying. I mean, 100% for people to try to make themselves a better person. But you got to let God get hold of you and give yourself to Him, and He will make it a lot easier for you that you will sense His Holy Spirit and you will sense that cleansing that comes from knowing Him, and you can be saved. Now, is everything going to be perfect and beautiful afterwards? No, there will be challenges. I will guarantee you Satan's going to come after you, okay? But that's what we're here for today for each other, to encourage one another and exhort one another. So Jesus, he preached, repent, and believe the gospel. And that should be so fundamental to what we're about today. That's what this church is all about. That's what all the churches are all about. There's a lot of good people, a lot of good churches, and there's a lot of good Christians in this community. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of good, wonderful believers throughout this country and this world. Believe me, a lot more than some people would have you think. And it's important to be a part of a movement and be a part of something that is so important because that is what life is all about, is to know God, to be truly repentant, and to be truly saved. And be like Jesus. Be eager to serve God. And He can help you be eager through the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Be submissive to His will and be willing to be obedient. And that's the word of God for the people of God. Amen. So we'll now um, stand and have the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our heavenly response is victory in Jesus. That's hymn number 370.
Dear God, we need healing. We need revival. We need you, Lord, to refresh our spirits. Help us, Lord, to go out into this world and live our lives as Christians. Let the people know that there is hope. There is no reason to despair. And come what may, dear God, you are in control. We thank you for Jesus, for salvation, for being saved. Dear God, just be with us, strengthen us in every way, and go with us in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray and ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.